Juste. Good morning and welcome. Today we will be singing the chant mass. Please stand and join in our opening hymn, number 713, Take Up Your Cross, number 713.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare ourselves to enter these sacred mysteries, let us first remember our sins and entrust them to God's boundless mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Let us pray. <clears throat> o God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, God delivered all these commandments. I, the Lord, am your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, the place of slavery. You shall not have other gods besides me. You shall not carve idols for yourselves in the shape of anything in the sky above, or on the earth below, or in the waters beneath the earth. You shall not bow down before them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, inflicting punishment for their father's wickedness on the children of those who hate me, down to the third and fourth generation, but bestowing mercy down to the thousandth generation on the children of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not leave unpunished the one who takes his name in vain. Remember to keep holy the Sabbath day. Six days you may labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. No work may be done then either by you or your son or daughter or your male or female slave or your beast or by the alien who lives with you. In six days, the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, but on the seventh day, he rested. That is why the Lord has blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, that you may have a long life in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male or female slave, nor his ox or ass, nor anything else that belongs to him. The word of the Lord. 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called Jews and Greeks alike, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as the money changers seated there. He made a whip out of cords and drove them all out of the temple area with the sheep and oxen and spilled the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And to those who sold doves, he said, take these out of here and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recalled the words of scripture, zeal for your house will consume me. At this, the Jews answered and said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they came to believe the scripture and the word Jesus had spoken. While he was in Jerusalem for the feast of Passover, many began to believe in his name when they saw the signs he was doing. But Jesus would not trust himself to them because he knew them all and did not need anyone to testify about human nature. He himself understood it well. The Gospel of the Lord. What is your relationship with the law of the Lord? Are they rules in the sense that they are the minimum obligations, the line items that must be followed, the procedures that must have that check next to them? Or is the law of the Lord the way in which you enter more deeply in relationship with God? There are two very different ways, one of which is quite common, the way that Christianity and even religion in general is looked at today, and the other is the genuine path of what the Lord has been doing in our own time and for many centuries before us. When the Lord comes to Moses and gives the commandments, far beyond being a mere list, a bureaucratic list, something that the Lord imposes upon his people, what is it that the Lord first and foremost says? The very first commandment that is several lines worth in the first reading today. Who is God? What he has already done for his people and who they are in relationship to him. All of the other laws flow from this. Our God enters into a covenant as he has many times from Noah to Abraham to Moses to the final fulfillment, the everlasting covenant of our Lord Jesus Christ. A covenant that is far more than a mere contract. It is not a transaction. 
It is not mere demands. It is not a tit for tat. If you give me this, I will give you that. But no, a covenant that is a promise of relationship. A promise that one person gives to another. And our Lord has always been the first to do it. The very first thing that God announces, I am the Lord your God. I am the one who has brought you out of slavery. I am the one that has freed you from bondage in Egypt. God acted first. He didn't stand back and say, I will do these things for you if you can meet these requirements. No, our God is always first a God of mercy. And he says, here I am. Look at what great things I have already done for you. And now here I am to promise myself to you again that if you live in these ways, if you follow me, even though it will be imperfect, he knows full well that it will, but if you try, if you remember me, if you turn back to me when you forget me, I'll always be here. I will always receive you. I am the one God of mercy and of love. And if you try to follow my commands, if you try to follow life in this way, in me, this eternal life will be yours. And that is what our God has been drawing all of the human race for millennia. And now we have that fullness of that revelation in Jesus Christ. Our God is not satisfied with the bureaucratic, well, if you follow these things, almost as though we were showing up at the courthouse or doing our taxes, stay in the box, fill in with only blue or black ink, etc., etc., write clearly. No, our God isn't about just mere order. But rather, the order that the Lord asks is the way in which he has made us. And the commands that he gives are reminders to us that we were once in that perfect state. You and I were once and always were meant to be in perfect relationship with the Lord and with each other. And he's given us that way. That those relationships can be healed they can be mended, that by living out the covenant of the Lord, we become more his body. We become more in relationship with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and with one another. He gives us his word, as well as his church, guided by the Holy Spirit, and he gives us his, his own life, most especially through the celebration of the sacraments. And when we come here, that we may be supported by one another, by our prayer, by our words and actions to each other, it is the body that, enlivened by his spirit through his covenant and we journey together to live out his command, to live out who we've always been meant to be as his body. This mutual building up of one another. How many times have we have sacrificed for something good in our lives? Maybe it's saving up for a vacation. Maybe it was to get in better shape or to prepare for an event, practice, getting ready for an exam or a performance. And we're willing to give up those things, things we like to eat, 
maybe exercises and drills that we would otherwise not do, but we're willing to do them because we see the good that it will bring. And what helped you do it? So oftentimes with someone else who joins you in it. A teammate, a friend, your spouse. If we're willing to sacrifice for those things which are good, but will eventually pass away. They will come and go. How much more so does our Lord draw our hearts and our minds to those things that will last forever? So we should ask ourselves, what is my relationship with the law of the Lord? What idols might I still have that, I, that is a good thing, but yet I still place it ahead of my relationship with the Lord. And when we turn to his law, to his discipline, in his word, in his word alive in his body in the church, he guides us. And that discipline will free us to live more free in the things of the Spirit, and the things that will last, the relationship with the Lord and with his body, his people. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. Amen. My Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God calls us and makes us his holy people. So turning to the one God, we offer our prayers of trust and faith. That our Lenten journey will draw us closer to God and unite our divine mercy parish as the body of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that the Holy Spirit will guide the hearts and minds of the leaders of all nations and inspire them to work towards lasting peace and the common good of all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the value of all life will be recognized and the dignity of each individual will be respected. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer in body, mind, or soul, may they grow in holiness by uniting their sufferings to Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have chosen the vocations of marriage and the single life, may they be strengthened as they answer God's call. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for the souls in purgatory. May they be purified by God's eternal mercy and brought into the heavenly banquet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, bless this community as we journey through Lent. Give us courage and strength to follow you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in our presentation hymn, number 501, Come Follow Me, number 501. sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech pardon for our sins may take care to forgive our neighbor, through Christ our Lord.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Apostol, Plenis Sun Clelia Terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus, qui You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray, upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice, filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei. Annuncio. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead. And looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, and Walker, our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then, freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Our communion hymn is number 342, I Am the Bread of Life, number 342.
Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The annual Parish Families Against Hunger food packaging event is on March 22nd and 23rd, that's a Friday and Saturday, in the Presentation Center. Individuals, groups of friends, whole families uh, are all invited to participate. Anybody ages five and up uh, can help. Uh, check the bulletin for details on signing up, as well as a list of volunteers that you can contact if you have additional questions. The Divine Mercy Parish Lenten Penance Service is next Sunday, March 10, at 2 p.m. In, in the St. Cecilia Church. Bishop Walker Nicholas is having another synodal listening session on Thursday, March 7, at the Holy Trinity Church in Fort Dodge. All people are welcome to participate, whether you're a regular mass goer or not, whether you're a Catholic or not. All people are welcome to attend, to either comment or simply to listen uh, to what ha others have to say in response to the two guiding questions for that evening. Father Zach is planning to go, and it would be great to have representation from our parish. Um, so if you do plan to go, please RSVP to Dolores Hugh Miller in our parish office by Tuesday. And that's mostly just so they know how many people are coming because it will involve a meal. She'll be able to tell you the exact times uh, as well. It'll be on Thursday evening on the 7th. Also, we have the next Catholic Sun gathering, which will be right here in Bancroft tonight. It'll be at the S&B Distillery, and the doors will open at 6 p.m. Our speaker this time is Father Travis Crotty, our vocations director. Um, but please come, enjoy some great conversation uh, about our faith, as well as enjoy some snacks and beverage. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Direct, O Lord, we pray the hearts of your faithful, and in your kindness grant your servants this grace, that abiding in the love of you and their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your commands. Through Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Go forth, the Mass has ended. <laughs>